In July of 2011, the average age of cars on the road in the U.S. was a record high of 11.1 years old. The standard deviation of cars ages was 3.2 years old. If nothing is known about the shape of the distribution, give an interval of car ages that will contain the ages of at least 88.9% of cars. So first thing I want to do is first identify what technique to use to solve the problem by looking at the keywords. So here they tell me to give an interval of car ages that will contain at least. So this phrase at least is very important. That's a phrase that we associate with Chebyshev's theorem. Now the other thing we know about Chebyshev's theorem is that we don't know anything about the shape of the distribution. So here it says nothing is known about the shape, right? So nothing is known about the shape of the distribution. That's another important phrase that again hints at Chebyshev's theorem. So now that I know it's Chebyshev's theorem, what are they asking for in this problem? Well, they're asking for an interval. Now Chebyshev's theorem normally gives a probability or a percent that's associated with a given interval. So this problem is going backwards from what we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing an interval provided, then we calculate a percent. So now they've given us the percent, so they've given us part of the answer. So if I go ahead and look at that then, I can say, well, okay, 88.9%. If I write that as a decimal, that's 0.889, right? And that would be equal to the calculation they did when they did 1 minus 1 over k squared, right? And you know, if you multiply it by 100%, this would become the percent that it is. So I'm removing that 100% part. So the idea here is to figure out what the k is. Now, this is actually a pretty famous number in Chebyshev's theorem. It corresponds to a k of 3. We can get at that if we want to by solving this using algebra. So if we want to do that, though, you know, of course, it's a little more time consuming. So I'll, I'll just suggest that you, know, you could actually memorize certain values from Chebyshev's theorem. Usually when they ask these sorts of problems, they're using a value that's already well understood or well known, like, for example, this one, which most people who are familiar with the theorem know corresponds to a k of 3. All right, so if we assume that k is 3 in this problem, then, then we just have to remember that Chebyshev's theorem works with the following structure for the interval. Remember the interval is symmetric around the mean, meaning they take the mean and they subtract off k standard deviations from the mean, and then they add k standard deviations to the mean. So if all that's true, then knowing that k is 3 means that we have to get the interval by doing the mean minus three standard deviations, the mean plus three standard deviations. All right, so now it's just a question of what is the mean, what is the standard deviation? Well, they tell us in the problem that the mean was 11.1, so 11.1 .1 minus three times the standard deviation, which they tell us is 3.2, so there's our 3.2. And then we do the same thing on the other side, only we're adding the next time, so plus three times 3.2. And then we just simply evaluate that either on, with paper and pencil or with a calculator. All right, let's see what this gives us. So it'll be 11.1 .1 minus 3 times 3.2. And when we do that, we get 1.5. And, and if we do the same calculation, 11.1 .1 plus 3 times 3.2. So now we're just adding instead of you know subtracting. We end up with 20.7. So the final interval is from 1.5 to 20.7 years. So 1.5 to 20.7 years. All right, and that'll basically do it. That ends up telling us the interval that will contain at least 88.9% of the cars. Now, how do we get that k equals to 3, though? That's the question. Of course, I said before that it, it could be something you have memorized or something that you understand you know, from knowing the theorem well, and there's some classic values for k that people have memorized, like k equals 2 is 75%, k equals 3 is 88.9%, um, etc. So you could memorize those values, or what you can do is use algebra to solve for the unknown quantity k. Let me show how that's done very quickly, but it is a little bit time consuming, so I will warn you that um, it's not a simple procedure, but not that hard either. So it just really revolves around algebra, of course, so we're going to basically simply need to do the following um, calculation. We're going to have to set that 88.9%, I'll write it as a decimal, 88.9%, 
equal to the expression 1 minus 1 over k squared. Remember, this is the expression that Chebyshev's theorem uses to derive decimals like this. Of course, if you multiply it by 100, you would get the percent that we have here, but we like to use decimals when working with um, calculations like this. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of the algebra that's involved in this problem. So I'm going to just do a couple of little simple things that I think most of you remember from your algebra class. I'm going to subtract off 1 from both sides here, right? So that's going to just simply um, give us um, you know, an expression that has just a k here, basically, and has a number over here on the other side. So if you actually take the difference between positive 0.889 and negative 1, you're going to get a negative 0.111. Now, this, of course, will disappear to 0, and you'll have negative 1 over k squared left on the right-hand side. Now this negative is kind of annoying, so I'm just going to divide both sides by a negative 1 or multiply both sides by a negative 1. If we do that, it will end up becoming positive on both sides, right? I have 1 over k squared. Now from there, what I want to do is sort of solve for k squared, so I want to get it up here and bring this down here. So you might have remembered that little idea of a cross multiplication, so I can make this into 0 0.111 over 1. If I multiply this by 1 and this by k squared, it'll end up producing a new expression, and that new expression would be as follows. 0 0.111 times k squared is equal to 1. Now, if I divide both sides by the 0 0.11, we end up having k squared is equal to 1 over 0 0.111. And then we end up having k squared is equal to, now if you divide 1 by 0.11, you would basically get 9. You get 9 with a long sort of, you know, decimal string after it, you know, dot, dot, dot. But I'm going to uh, just remind you that this has been rounded. And in factuality, it would be k squared is equal to basically 9. If you actually do the division, though, you'll get 1 divided by 0.111 to give you, 0.9009009, you know, so on and so forth. It's just going to repeat on and on this way. But remember that actually that's just because they've rounded this at some point. This was originally 0.8 repeating, so it should have been 0.88888888, but they rounded it because they wanted to bring it to three decimal places. So remember that because that rounding has occurred, it's caused these things here. So I'm just going to ignore those and just say, hey, look, our k squared is equal to 9. And that's really all we needed to know because that would imply then that k is equal to plus or minus 3, right?